Ugh, it's good for look. I am skincare obsessed, and this whole video is about how that obsession has got out of hand. Also, the queen tells me that these do nothing, but got your attention right. <laughs> I am a skincare freak. I could talk for hours about Tret, double cleansing, SPF, and I'm seeing people raving about LED face masks, and in particular, the benefits of red light therapy. Kim K even has a 78,000 pounds LED red light bed. And so it's got me thinking, can I DIY something at home? Now, when this all started, people started to rave about heat lamp lights. This is the sort of thing you'd put in a chicken coop to keep them warm. And people were like, it's red light, it can help with your skin. Why are you paying lots of money for this fancy LED light? This will do the same. Now, I'm not a skincare expert. I'm very much an enthusiast. However, I do know someone who is. This is Michelle, also known as Lab Muffin. She has a chemistry PhD. She's a science communicator and a cosmetic chemist. She knows everything there is to do with skin, hair. She's wrote an incredible book. She was the person that I knew I had to ask. The reason a heat lamp wouldn't work is because it puts out heat. Heat is not good for your skin. Red light is if you have too much heat that is probably gonna counteract some of those benefits. What is probably going on there is that they've got a heat light and then the red is like a filter. So I've got a blue version here, but basically this, it gets rid of colors other than red rather than just producing red. So if it's getting rid of colors other than red, then you're probably gonna get a spread of wavelengths and some of those wavelengths might be undoing the effects of other wavelengths. So you kind of want a really narrow band, which you can get with LEDs, but not with just like a red cover. So it turns out not all red light is made equally. It definitely gives out heat. Look at that glow. Oh my gosh, it's steaming. Okay. Uh, this project has three aspects to it. So if you are skincare or skincare tech obsessed, then you are going to want to check out all three. This is where my other friend Becky comes in. Now, Becky is an incredible maker. If you don't follow her, make sure you do. Becky is doing one of her infamous teardowns on one of the leading LED masks. Michelle is talking about all of that skincare science. What does the research actually say? And I'm here on a mission to DIY a low cost solution and hopefully create something that is the poor person's version of Kim K's 78,000 pounds LED bed. Brief physics, colored light is different wave Lens. That's why we see the different colors and there's some stuff like infrared that our eyes can't see. Now the research shows the red light, it has to be between a certain wavelength. So back to the LEDs, you can get color changing LEDs. And the way that color changing LEDs work is that they have multiple LEDs within them. So you're actually paying more because you don't need the blue and you don't need the green and blue is more expensive. So if you have a color changing LED light that has red, if you check the spec, it might have the correct wavelength in that's good for your skin. LEDs come in different shapes and sizes, but essentially as I'm starting from scratch and I want to make this as easy as possible, I'll be looking for some red LED strip with the right wavelength. One of the biggest issues I came across this is that actually the full specs are not usually available with the products. And to get the full specs, you have to pay a lot more. So I've splashed out and I've bought some red LED strips that come with some very impressive specs. It also comes with a very impressive price tag, 45 pound. Research shows that you need to be using your mask regularly. And I'm a workshop girly, which means I had the perfect mask that I wanted to put these in. It's a welding mask. Talk about the irony. Now, if you don't know about welding, welding gives off this heat and light and it's really damaging for the skin. When it arcs up, you should never look directly into the arc, which is why you wear the mask. But also if you have bare skin when you're welding, you get essentially the most horrific sunburn. So I usually weld PPE'd to the hilt. As a skincare SPF wearing girly, I do not want that anywhere near me. That is gonna damage and age me and probably give me cancer. Let's get building. I cut and soldered all the LEDs so they laid flat. I have to say this is nowhere near as nice to use as my actual proper Lincoln ones. <laughs> but I wasn't gonna do this to a Lincoln one until I knew if this worked or not. This is like, this is great for your hair actually as well. So LED light, Ugh, it's good for, lo for lots of things. Oh, I need to work out how this works. It's quite tricky to see anything because obviously you've got red light that way. So I'm gonna have to try it and see if I can weld in it. It does have a little button so I can turn it up or down the lights. So that might help. This is a real test. Can I weld in it? Let's start on the lower settings. That was actually okay. Can I go brighter? 
the brighter I go, it is a little bit trickier. It's definitely like a, a sweet spot. Do you know what? That was actually fine. I thought that was gonna be so much trickier. Obviously, you can't have it on full brightness, but yeah, you could keep that on. I would say for my lifestyle, this is a pretty good replacement. Now, there's a few things. I don't like how far away some of these LEDs are in the center of the mask. I could put them, if I was careful, across where the visor is. Michelle says they'll still work if they're two inches away, but it could do with maybe another strip down the middle of the mask. But it's pretty good. I have been trying to find some slightly cheaper LEDs that have the right spec and I have managed to find them. These are like 10 pounds a roll. I still think the LED masks that you can buy are really practical. Like if you're gonna wear them to cook or while you're cleaning. I still have not got anywhere near my Kim K equivalent LED bed. So I have been planning. Now I have some cheaper LEDs and I also have ordered a panel light which has infrared in it. Now, if you've watched Michelle's video, which you should, you will know that infrared is also really useful. And it looks like infrared might have even more benefits. The reason I haven't used infrared LED strips is because they're a little bit trickier to get hold of. They're often used in security. And although I could find some at a reasonable price, they had really long delivery dates on them. Unlike the red LED strip that you can buy from well-known internet sites to be delivered the next day, I feel like I should point out the strip lighting works really well because it already has all the resistors. It's quite easy to connect lots of strip LEDs together, a lot less soldering than if you have the individual components and you have to solder them all. But the LED infrared strip, it's just not as readily available. So I've actually just decided to focus on the red light. How am I gonna recreate Kim K's £78,000 LED bed on a budget? Well, I've got these panels and at first I start to think about some sort of tent. We all know what that's for, right? Or, or even some sort of like coffin with the LED panels in. But I kept coming back to the fact that I don't think I'm going to use it. The reason that I love my mask is I can do skincare on the go. I'm habit stacking. It allows me to do my red light therapy while also working in the workshop. Got me thinking, where could I integrate red light into my routine. And I thought, do you know what? At night, while I'm sat watching telly, I could also be doing my skincare. At first I thought maybe some sort of LED red light blanket, but then I turned to wearables. Wouldn't it be great if I had LED loungewear? Let's make some. I keep going back and forwards about what sort of clothes that I want. I started thinking like a jumper and tracky bottoms, but actually I think being able to zip it up the front would be really useful when making it. Did think about some jammers because you can get a set of those. But I'm not sure if they're gonna have anything that's sturdy enough to be able to hold the weight of the LEDs. Super stretchy, don't think that's gonna hold it. See some of the thicker stuff, doesn't have a zip at the front. So I just opted for a plain black oversized tracksuit. I've got clothing, Velcro, reflective tape, LEDs. At first, my thought was to just attach the LEDs straight to the inside of the clothing. But then, I felt that was very short-sighted of me. <laughs> if I'm honest, slightly grubby. I want to be able to wash these things. If I mounted the LED lights on something covered in reflective tape on one side, then hopefully I'll get the most out of the LED lights. And then if I attach them to the inside of the clothing with the Velcro, I think that will work. Let's start off with the jacket. I've gone for much bigger sizing because I know there's lots of bits to fit in there and Velcro and all of that stuff. So I set about cutting out fabric panels, roughly the sizes that I needed. So I had one for each arm, the back panel, each side of the hoodie. And then I pretty much just repeated the process each time, cutting out some reflective strip, sticking it down, cutting the LED to length. Now if you want to cut LEDs you can cut them across these little gold bits. It actually indicates where you can cut them. And I peeled back the plastic, stuck them in place. This whole thing was a little bit fiddly but it definitely got the most out of the LEDs. And then I soldered them all in place. I used two different coloured wires, one for all of the negative and one for all of the positive, just so I didn't get confused. And I just repeated this and repeated it. Did it for each trouser leg. I did lots of this in my jammers. It was very boring. I then covered every bit that I'd soldered with some electrical tape. I mean, 
this was the bizarrest thing to try and fit it on. Definitely a two-person job. Fastened it around my arm, taped it in place, rolled up and over the sleeves, undid the Velcro. I connected each panel with Wagos. You can see this bit's a little bit interesting, but they're connected with Wagos, and I can't stop thinking about the hood. This was the last thing I felt like doing at this point, but I did put some LEDs in there. You can see. But yes, the whole thing lights up. There's LEDs everywhere. Look at those Wagos <laughs> connecting everything. But it does mean all of the panels will come out. They're all Velcroed in place. So I can replace the tracksuit or I can wash it. I present to you LED loungewear. Right, let me clip you on here. Uh, I could sit and wear this. I think it would get quite warm after a while. So... There's a little bit of finessing on that side to do. There's no way you would be able to wear it to fly. It is definitely wiry. Yeah, sorry, I'm not wearing anything underneath this because that's how you would wear it to get the benefits. I have to say it isn't really that robust. I've just knocked out a Wago and loads of panels aren't working. I definitely think LED loungewear could be a thing. I'm very glad that it's on panels that can be taken out because then it can be washed. And actually, I did diligently go around and cover all the connections with electrical tape, which it means it's got a little... It's definitely a noise about it. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but yeah. It is slightly unnerving. I show you, but I don't want to get demonetized, sorry. The sound, the demo of this, it's all over the place. This is definitely way more practical than a bed that I have to lay under. I think putting this on at night for 20 minutes while you're watching telly, way more effective way to get it in. Just needs a little bit of tweaking. So let's have a little thing about cost per wear. So the tracksuit will last about five years and you have to get a new one, but the LEDs last 10. So it's counting the cost of another tracksuit. And let's think if you're gonna use it for like 365 days of the year, for 10 years, this is how much it would cost. And let's work back how many times you'd have to use Kim K's bed to get that. It's quite a lot, isn't it? This is really quite heavy. <laughs> this is what happens when you try and add LEDs to clothing that's not designed to hold LEDs. So what have we learned? That I don't want to solder any more LEDs right now, that I'm, I'm kind of done with that. <laughs> that I would like nothing more than to hand over hundreds of pounds to a skincare mask making company for ease. To be fair, I do, I genuinely think LED mask was a winner and then my obsession got out of hand and I was just thinking where else can I shine LED light at? And although I definitely think first prototype, great, needs a little bit of improvement for comfort and ease of wear. I feel like it is a win. I feel like I'm just absolutely exhausted from soldering LEDs. But that evening, after I'd had a break and a little cup of tea and I sat in my LED loungewear doing my skincare while having a bit of me time, I loved it. It's not a perfect product, but at less than 3p a wear and for the ease of being able to add this into my daily routine, it was worth it. Now, make sure you check out Michelle's and Becky's video. Part of me did wonder if at the end of this, I would not be as obsessed with this technology, but actually I'm more obsessed. Thanks for watching. See you next time.